good afternoon yesterday we have seen the like as i told there are two case studies with respect to the cantilever beam one subject to the point. so there is where simply supported beam subjected to point load so yesterday just we have given the or we have taken the introduction about first case so again i will draw then we'll see what is double integration method and how deflection beam deflection will be calculated okay how beam deflection will be calculated and slope of a beam will be calculated at a particular point then we'll try to solve one simple problem tomorrow what we can have is we can have just one uh, in like maculem method what you can call is uh, maculem method that statement also will take today and tomorrow we'll try to have one problem on maculem method then we can wind up okay yes. okay good afternoon yesterday we have seen uh the double integration method one of the case studies that is what i had told just we have started with the case study today what will we do is we'll try to complete that case study and there is one more as i told simply supported beam with a point load that we just look it how it will be solved methodology will remain same only type of beam will be changed then we'll try to solve one problem where deflection and slope will be found and at the end we'll try to just have knowledge of one of the other method that is maculem method and tomorrow we'll just see one problem and we can finish this unit okay so already you have taken yesterday that is case 1 cantilever subjected to point load okay i will redraw that sketch whatever we have taken tomorrow uh, yesterday cantilever beam means one end is fixed one end is free this is cantilever beam so i'll call this as point a i'll call this as point b where it is subjected to point load w okay then take any random section at a distance of x from free end and this is a section x x that is what we have taken okay so write down next movement about this where we are stop movement about this section x at a distance from x is given as is given as movement that is nothing but the mx is equal to 
W into X. Now easily you can see here beam is straight initially once we apply load this beam will try to bend in this way. This is nothing but the sagging bending. Therefore this will become minus that is Mx is equal to minus W into X. Yesterday we have seen the deflection equation from that we know that we know that M is equal to EI d square y divided by dx square. That is what we have known. So, this is one of the movement. M is equal to EI d square y by dx square. Equating both. We will equate this movement as well as this movement. See, this is just a section. If I take it for the entire length, this will become only M. So, both are only movements only. So, I can easily equate those two movements. Okay. Equating both. Equating. So, what you will get? Minus W into X is equal to EI into D square Y by DX square minus W into X is equal to EI d square y by dx square. Call this as equation 1. Integrating above equation integrating with respect to X twice with respect to X twice we get we get slope and deflection equation we get slope and deflection equation. okay so we'll integrate it so integrating what is the integration of w into x minus as it is what is the integration of x x square minus w x square by 2 is equal to <coughs> ei sorry so so i'll just rearrange terms i will take this side ei d square y by dx square is equal to minus w into x so integrate this or yeah integrate this ei is a constant as it is dy by dx is equal to minus w x square by 2 plus c1 this is 1 ei dy by dx is equal to minus w x integration is x square by 2 plus c1 Okay, again integration, integrating now this. So, EI constant, what is dy by dx integration? It is only y is equal to minus w. What is x square integration? x square integration is x cube divided by 3. 3 into 2 is 6. So, minus w x cube by 6 plus c1 into x plus c2. Call this equation number 3. I will just check. Okay, EI dy by dx minus w x square by 2 plus c1. EI into y minus w x cube by 6 plus c1 into x plus c2. Where c1 and c2 are nothing but the integration constants. Okay. So, c1 and c2 are constants. So, my objective next is to determine these constants by applying appropriate boundary conditions. Okay, so I have to apply, I have sketch, I need to just see what will be the slope, what will be the deflection and a constants, that is C1 and C2. Okay, write down. Boundary conditions. Boundary conditions. So, first boundary condition. At X is equal to L. 
at this is first or a i will call x is equal to l that is x is equal to l what will happen to the dy by dx dy by dx is nothing but the slope at x is equal to l see here x is increment from this end to this end so at x is equal to here x is 0 x is equal to 0 and here x is equal to l so it is incrementing from free end so at x is equal to l beam is fixed so it will not bend or it will not deflect hence there will not be any slope therefore at x is equal to l dy by dx is equal to 0 this is first boundary condition i will substitute this in equation 1 substitute in equation 1 so what i will get at x is equal to l so minus w into l is equal to dy by dx sorry not equation number 1 i guess equation number 2 i need to substitute in equation number 2 okay so <coughs> equation number 1 is the deflection equation that we have just equated so substituting in equation number 2 so what i will get dy by dx is 0 so ei into dy by dx is 0 means 0 is equal to minus w x will become l now so minus w l square by 2 minus w l square by 2 plus c1 so what c1 will become w l square by 2 this is what i will get c1 that is w l square by 2 okay second boundary condition that is boundary condition number 2 <coughs> at x is equal to l at x is equal to l what about deflection See, x is equal to l means this condition where we are reaching the entire span length of a beam at this distance x is equal to l deflection of a beam is also 0 y is equal to 0 okay substitute that in equation number 3 substitute in equation number 3 what is equation number 3 equation number is this so at x is equal to l y is also 0 so left hand side will become 0 minus w x will become l l q by 6 plus c1 c1 we have found out w l square and x will also become L so W L cube by 2 plus C2. So if I take LCM, what do we get? 2 ones are 2, 2 to 3 are 6. So LCM will be 6. So 2 W L cube plus W L cube 3 W L cube by 6. So W L cube by 2. but it has minus sign okay so minus w l cube plus 3 w l cube divided by 6 so 2 3 is 2 minus w l cube so 2 <coughs> 4 so just substitute wl cube c2 so after solving what you will get wl cube okay 0 is equal to and plus c2 okay so 2 wl cube by 6 wl cube by 3 here so c2 will become minus w l cube by 3 okay because if i send this term that side here it will become positive but that side it will become negative so 0 is equal to i will I have taken lcm 6 so w l minus w l cube as it is here is 2 2 3 is a 6 so plus 3 w l cube divided by 6 3 minus 2 it will become plus 2 w l cube by 6 2 ones are 2 2 3 is a 6 okay so wl cube by 3 
plus C2, but I want C2. So this plus will go this side, it will become minus. That is C2 is equal to minus WL cube divided by 3. Minus WL cube divided by 3. So C1 and C2. So I will write those values. C1 is WL square by 2. And C2 is minus WL cube by 3. Okay, so WL square by 2 and WL cube by 3. Next, what we have to do is, we already we know that, we know deflection equation and already we have got equation number 2 and 3 as a dy by dx is nothing but the slope and y is nothing but the deflection. So, constants are there. So, I need to substitute those constants again into those equations. So, write down. Substituting C1 and C2, substituting C1 and C2 in equation, in equation number 2 and 3. In equation number 2 and 3. Therefore, so slope from equation 2. What I will get, what is equation number 2 is this. I will write equation number 2. Ei dy by dx is equal to minus wx square by 2 plus c1. This is equation number 2. Okay. I will write again equation number 2. Now I will substitute c1 value. Ei dy by dx is equal to minus wx square by 2, c1 value is plus wl square by 2, plus wl square by 2, okay, right, I have substituted, now again, we know that slope at free end, slope at free end that is I need to get free end means at x is equal to 0 at see you can calculate slope at in between also you can calculate slope at fixed end also just you need to vary this x because x is a variable here l is the entire length but x is a variable so this equation whatever you have got is with respect to the x. Suppose if you want to get somewhere in between, then you need to know here. Suppose as per given condition, this is entire length L. And suppose if you need to get this, so this distance from fixed n is what? L is total. This distance is L minus x. So that variable you should put correctly. But here what we will get is, we will get at free end, slope at free end, where x is equal to 0. So, if I put x is equal to 0, ei dy by dx is equal to, when x is equal to 0 I put, this will become wl square by 2. What I want? dy by dx is nothing but the slope at the free end is equal to wl square divided by 2ei. So, this is slope at free end. dy by dx, that is wl square divided by 2ei. So, I will write here, slope at free end. So, I am mentioning the entire thing. That is, dy by dx is equal to W L square divided by 2 E I. That is slope at free end. That is W L square divided by 2 E I. Okay. Similarly, what I will do? Deflection. Deflection from equation 3. Okay. So, first I will write equation number 3. That is 
E I into Y is equal to minus W X cube by six plus C one C one value. Okay, I will write first C one into X plus C two. This is equation number three. So I'll substitute now C one and C two values here. So E I into Y is equal to minus W X cube by six plus what is C one we have got? C one we have got W L square by two. So W L square by two into X plus what is C two we have got? Minus W L cube by three. So this plus will become minus. Minus W L cube by three. This is equation. Now, what I want is deflection at free end. Deflection at free end. That is at x is equal to zero. From sketch, it is pretty much clear that free end is nothing but the this fixed end is here. Here x is equal to zero. Here x is equal to l. That is what we have mentioned clearly. Therefore, substitute here x is equal to zero. So e i into y is equal to when x is equal to zero, this term will become zero. Here x multiplied is there. That's why this will also become zero minus w l cube by three. Therefore, y I'll send e i that side minus W L cube divided by 3 E I. So this is it. Y is equal to minus W L cube by 3 E I. That is deflection at the free end. Okay. So deflection Y minus W L cube. Divided by C E I. So E I already we have spoken. What is E I? E I is nothing but sometimes it will be given, sometimes it will not be given. Okay, this is just one case study, and I have told in books you will find deflection at the center, deflection at a random distance of x, or deflection at the fixed end where x will be equal to L. So at that point, see this is what equation number two and three. these are generalized equations whatever we have got by double integration method where a point what you have to do is you can vary that but you should be at what location you want that particular distance we will be putting in terms of x is equal to l also or it might be x is equal to 0 at that is what we have seen or in between x is equal to l by 2 suppose if you want to know the deflection and slope At x is equal to, there is nothing but the same. You can substitute those values in modified equation number two and three, where we have, okay, standing. What I will do is these new equations where c1, c2. I can call this as a, and I can call this as b. So, so a and b are a deflection and slope equation. Can beam method or can deliver beam. Subjected to point load, so A and B are the two basic governing equations. You'll get whichever point you want. You can put now. This is slope at the free end. I have mentioned it clearly here. Similarly, I have mentioned deflection at the free end. Suppose if you want to get at the fixed end, already we know at fixed end there will not be any deflection. There will not be any slope because fixed end beam will not undergo any like any phenomenon. It will not undergo anything. obviously it will be zero just you can see when i substitute here x is equal to l minus wl square this is nothing but the plus wl square so these two things will get cancel anything multiplied by zero will be zero similarly at x is equal to l wx cube then this is nothing but the plus again x l cube will become minus minus plus will go minus wl cube so here lcm It will come six, two, three. Again, it will come six. Okay, so two, three. If you do everything, if you check the calculations, definitely it should come. 
modify that equation okay so in examination it could be so you need to remember deflection see maximum load for a cantilever usually it will be at this is what we are going to so will why at free end So we'll take one simple numerical. Because this is double integration. Two times we have done in maculometer. Double integration as an macular method. That numerical will start. Tomorrow we can have complete numerical. Okay. So write down. Problem. A cantilever beam of three meter length of three meter length is having a point load is of 25 kilonewton of kilonewton free end at free end full stop inertia the moment of inertia comma that is i n to the power 8 millimeter raised to 4 n crore i guess n to the power 8 millimeter raised to 4 and e that is young's modulus is 2.1 into 10 to 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square newton per mm square find and deflection find slope and deflection at the free end <coughs> find slope and deflection at the free end already we have written equations for our reference okay if you want you can draw one cantilever if you don't want then also it's fine but i just draw cantilever beam it is sub length of 3 meter three meter is nothing but the 3000 mm okay it is subjected to point load 
at the free end that is 25 kilo newton 25 into 10 to the power 3 newton at the free end okay this is given to you w 25 into 10 to the power 3 newton length is 3000 mm 3000 mm <coughs> i moment of inertia 10 raised to 8 millimeter raised to 4 and e is nothing but the young's modulus which is 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square okay already we know cantilever beam maximum deflection will be at the free end maximum slope will be at the free end and they have asked us to find those things at the free end only so write down we know that we know that slope at free end slope at free end slope is dy by dx dy by dx is equal to what equation we have w l square divided by 2 e i w l square divided by 2 e i so these are very elementary type problems dy by dx is equal to w w is 25 u 25 into 10 to the power 3 length is 3000 mm so i will try to keep everything in the same unit 2 ei is 2 into 10 to the power 2.1 i guess yeah so 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 and i is 10 raised to 8 <coughs> just do calculation and dy by dx slope you will get in radians you can substitute these values and you can check already i have calculated slope comes at dy by dx I will denote this with theta, which comes at around 0 0.005357 radians. Zero point zero zero five three five seven radians. You can cross check it. Okay. Next, what we want? deflection okay so deflection at free end deflection at free end already we know the equation so you can write that deflection that is nothing but the y minus because see it will be sagging that is what condition we had taken minus w l cube divided by 3 e i <coughs> substitute things load is 25 25 into 10 to the power 3 length is 3000 cube divided by 3 e is 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 i is 10 to the power 8 so deflection y you will get 25 okay into 10 to the power 3 3000 cube wl cube by 3 ei and e is 2.1 into 10 to the power 5 and i is 10 raised to 8 so i have already calculated this is 10.71 millimeter this is one of the simplest problem okay remember the units for deflection it is calculated or it will be in mm because all substitutions we are doing in mm with respect to the slope it will be in radians okay. slope will be in radians this is one of the state forward simple problem now next so in book 
you will find variety of problems like at the mid span and i had told already i had told you you need to do the second case study where beam will be subjected to like simply supported beam which will be subjected to concentrated load at the mid span okay you will get it into the various books now next what will we do is we'll just try to see there is one more method that is nothing but the maculez method okay so write down next title as maculez method maculez method M A C A U L E Y S M A C A U L E Y S that is nothing but maculez third right down it is it is improved version of improved version of double integration method improved version of double integration method which can be used for which can be used for finding the deflection of a beam finding deflections of a beam subjected to discontinuous loads subjected to discontinuous loads as shown below as shown below okay so this continuous load we'll see one example okay steps i will not give in detail what we will do is we'll do this one problem we'll do by this method which also involves integration double integration so one problem will be do or we'll do and there only i will explain the steps so it will not be of repeat where now you'll note down the steps and later again you will do the problem so first just i will explain the process or how we will be doing this methodology we'll see that then one problem simple problem we'll solve then we like this is just a end we are at the end part where we will be knowing what are like different types of methods are there to find okay so this is one load this could be the other load this could be the third load so w1 w2 you can draw one cantilever w3 so you can take one section here you can take second section here and you can take third section here where like you can call x11 you can call this as x22 you can call this as x33 where you need to take sections in a such a way that which will cover all the loads so section 33 which is there which will be covering all the loads okay write down basically basically this method involves this method involves 
equating the moment equation equating the moment equation consisting of the terms consisting of the terms related all loads on a beam all loads on a to the term to the term ei d square y by dx square to the term ei d square y by dx square comma to get the expression to get the expression involving involving moment curvature relationship involving moment curvature relationship full stop the deflection at any section on the beam the deflection at any section of the beam can be found can be found by choosing the terms by choosing the terms related to the moment related to the moment about that section related to the moment about that section okay this is just an introduction where double integration also will be there it is a improvised double integration method where you will be equating terms with respect to the ei d square y by dx square ei is nothing but the flexural rigidity so d ei d square y by dx square and you will be taking sections in such a way that at the end, at the end you can find partial what you can say deflection also means at that particular length due to that particular load and at the end you can find the entire deflection due to combined loading effects okay so again sectioning various sectioning we need to take so one example we'll see okay write down if you want you can take that so these are discontinuous loads <coughs> take one example a 3 meter long cantilever beam a 3 meter long cantilever beam is subjected to the forces as shown is subjected to the forces as shown determine slope and deflections determine slope and deflections at point a b and c at point a b and c take e 210 gigapascal take e 
210 गीगा पास्कल एंड आय 40 इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस फाइव फोर्टी इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस फाइव मीटर रेस टू फोर मीटर रेस टू फोर ओके सो अगेन इट इज कैंटी लिवर विथ पॉइंट लोड्स ओनली यू हैव एज आई है टोल्ड This is what they have given. This is one cantilever. There is a load at one point. There is load also at other point. There are total three loads. The total length they have given as three meter. Okay. So this is one meter. This is one meter. This is one meter. Oh. This is point A. This is point B. This is point C. Load at A is 20 kilonewton. Load at B is 30 kilonewton, and load at C is 40 kilonewton. Okay. So A, B, C. These are three points. So. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Now given E also. E is two ten giga pascal. So two ten giga pascal. Giga pascal to mega pascal giga is nine. Mega pascal is six. Okay. So if you want, you can convert this everything into so giga pascal also equal to two ten newton per. Q10 into 10 to the power 9 pascal is newton per meter square. So here forces are in kilo newton, so you can convert that into newton, and you can have meter, okay, or have one common unit. So you can have 210 into 10 to the power 3 newton per millimeter square also. So either value you can use. And next we have I also, that is moment of inertia. Also, it is given in meter. So let us better keep it in a meter. 40 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter raised to 4. Into 10 to the power minus 5 meter raised to 4. So this is a problem. 20 kilonewton, 30 kilonewton, 40 kilonewton. Total length of the beam is 3 meter. One is one. Each load is one meter apart. So this you can convert into 10 to the power 3. Okay, so newton and meter. So newton per meter square, 210 giga pascal. Pascal is nothing but the newton per meter square. So I is 14 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter raised to 4. So what will we do is you can just copy this problem. And now suppose if I start hardly five minutes, so again it will be like half will do. so better tomorrow we'll take one entire class and we'll try to finish it off okay so thank you tomorrow again we'll meet at 2 o'clock